Jó estét kívánok! Laura Rice Andrea vagyok, az Amerikai Magyar Koalíció igazgató. Örömmel és nagy szeretettel köszöntöm a jelenlévőket, és remélem mindenki élvezni fogja a ma esti gála vacsora programját. And to the Brown family who's looking over here, <laughs> that was my last few words in Hungarian, so don't worry. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Andrea Lauer Rice. I'm the president of the Hungarian American Coalition and your mistress of ceremonies this evening. I'd like to welcome you all to this evening's annual Hungarian American Coalition Gala Dinner, a tradition now in its 14th year. Right? We have many dis distinguished guests in attendance this evening, so I'd like to take a few mo moments to recognize them. This evening's honorees, Dr. Jenny Brown, pioneer, patent holder, breaker of glass ceilings, and a longtime friend of the coalition, and all members of the Brown family, her beloved husband and greatest fan, Glenn, their children, Robin Bobinger, her husband, John, their son, Charles, their son, Eric Brown, and his daughter, Carolyn Odom. Thank you all for being here this evening. And Dr. Ildiko Oros, who unfortunately could not be with us this evening because apparently, upon hearing of the plans we were making to tour DC and meet with leaders uh, here to bring some attention to the situation of Hungarians in Ukraine, the Ministry of Education from Kiev impromptu scheduled an important accreditation meeting on exactly these days that she was forced to be present for. So I guess we're doing something right. I so wish Ildiko could have been here because like Jenny, she is an absolute force of nature. However, we are lucky because accepting the award on behalf of Ildiko and the Ferenc Rakotsi Transcarpathian Hungarian Institute is His Excellency Laszlo Brenzovic, president of KMKS. KMKS is the uh, cultural union of Hungarians in Transcarpathia, and the only he is the only Ukrainian member of parliament to represent a minority, not just the Hungarian minority, you understand, but any minority. He has been participating and will be participating in several meetings in the D.C. area over the coming week on this, his first trip to the United States, and he is also celebrating a birthday today. No. <laughs> Welcome to Laszlo and George Kota, who accompanied him from Ukraine and uh, has been just an incredible, um, an incredible uh, uh, part of the delegation. Thank you so much for being here. We'd like to welcome this evening's gala co-chairs, Governor George Pataki, former governor of the great state of New York. Woo! And Edith Kishlauer, founding member of the Hungarian American Coalition. Chair Emerita, and whether or not she wants to claim this later, mother of the MC. <laughs> Mr. John Lipsky, former first deputy managing director of the International Monetary Fund. Thank you so much for being here this evening, John. Ambassador Reka Semerkini, executive vice president of the Center for European Policy Analysis. Ambassador Janos Chak and his fantastic Hungarian mustache. <laughs> Just deserves a line all on its own right there. Miss Susan Hutchison, a longtime supporter of the coalition and former director of the Charles and Lisa Shimoni Fund for the Arts, sponsor of the original congressional internship program. Dr. Joe Foster, Vice President of Marymount University and his lovely wife, Stephanie, and Leanne Summerfield, President of the Faculty of Marymount University and her husband, Barry. Welcome. <laughs> I'd like to welcome our table full of representatives of the Magyar Foundation of North America and thank you for your support this evening. We have Joanne Barnhart, Executive Director, her son, Niles, Candace Grow, Congressman Gus Billirakis, representing Florida's 12th District, Craig, I'm sorry, Amanda Bowman, Lee Cohen, Craig Engel, Crystal Hartsfield, Liz Hitosh, and Chad Kilborn. I hope I got everybody. Yeah? Okay. 
That looks like a fun table over there. <laughs> Dr. Ariel Cohen, the internationally renowned political and economic analyst who wears 10 different hats. I wasn't exactly sure how to describe him after researching him online. So we're going to go with Director of the Center for Energy, National Resources, and Geopolitics at the Institute for Analysis of Global Security. <laughs> And that's a mouthful, that's right. And he's also one of our mentors of the CIP program, so thank you. Marion Smith, Executive Director of the Victims of Communism Memorial Foundation, looking very sharp in his butch guy tonight. <laughs> and Anna Smith-Lacey, Director of the Hungary Initiatives Foundation, primary sponsor of the Coalition Internship Program. I know you all had a, like a black and white thing going, so I don't know if that means the same as it does in Westerns. One of you is the good guy, one of you is the bad guy. I don't know. <laughs> yes, welcome, Anna. I'd like to give a very warm welcome to Dr. Susan Pekorovic and Attila Beresh and their son, Adam Beresh, founders of the Ambassadors of the Future. They are supporters of the coalition and new friends all the way from Los Angeles, California, who helped us raise funds for the Bela Bognar family uh, Hungarian Scholarship Fund earlier this year, and they just mentioned December 15th is the date for the upcoming gala, so we all need to put that on our calendars. Welcome. I'd like to welcome several folks who are about to be posted at the U U.S. Embassy in Hungary. Peter D'Amico, incoming Deputy Economic and Political Counselor. Mark Tervakovsky, incoming Political and Economic Counselor. And James Land, incoming Political Affairs Officer. A special welcome to all the hardworking members of the Hungarian Embassy, Kristina Oshvat, Dorotya Marton Finaj, Dora Zombori. Did I leave anybody out or is that everyone I see? Thank you all for being here. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, I'd like to welcome all members of the Hungarian American Coalition Board by asking you all to stand and be recognized. Can I ask everyone? All right. We have Dr. Agnes Virga, Chairman of the Coalition, President of the Hungarian Society of Massachusetts, Max Teleki, President Emeritus, uh, Stefan and Eriko Fedor, Founders of the American Hungarian Heritage House and VP of the Coalition, Sheila Grauser, Coalition VP, Honorary Consul General and President of the Minnesota Hungarians, Ann Bader, a longtime friend and supporter of the Coalition, George Pogan. You all sat down, so my cheat sheet is gone. Okay. I'm hoping I got everybody there. Um, we also have several uh, former and current coalition internship program interns in the audience this evening, and I'd like to ask you all to stand. You are all incredible. Okay, Laszlo, Eva, I know a few of you are here over there. Faye, yes. Shotzi, Noemi. Anna, I won't make you stand, but... So you are all incredible, but I did want to call out um, Shotzi Borzashi, who was just in Turkey last week, and Faye Gillespie, who came all the way from Montreal to be here this evening. The folks who just stood up, they represent our future. Thank you all for being here. We love you guys. And finally, I'd like to give a very special welcome to two special guests in the audience who have been behind the scenes of the coalition and the gala for many, many years, but are only attending their first one live and in person. Katica Avakumovic. <laughs> the much better half to Jolt Sekeresh. Aww. <laughs> Oh, get us up. Well, I'm just kidding. <laughs> We're actually working on a petition for sainthood for cuts, though, so I'm sure you understand that. And I also want to give um, a big shout out to award-winning documentary filmmaker and co-founder of The Memory Project, which you all have been hearing me talk about for years and years, Reiko Pignisky, in the house. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for coming to our 14th annual gala and scholarship fundraising dinner. Welcome, one and all. And now I would like to invite Maximilian Teleki, President Emeritus, to the podium.
start right there. Good evening, everyone. It's wonderful to see everyone this evening. Um, I have the unique, um, I guess, once in a lifetime opportunity and, and duty to um, share some news uh, regarding um, our coalition internship program. Um, and it's, for me, a great pleasure to do so because I was the first uh, intern serving in the White House back in um, 1994, I think. Um, and uh, I both had the pleasure of, of working with interns uh, in this organization and uh, having them come over to um, participate in what we think is a very unique program. Uh, Earlier this year, several of us had a, uh, a conversation about um, a dear friend who recently passed, and that was uh, um, John Lauer. And John Lauer uh, was many things to, to many of us. And for those that did not have the privilege to know him, he uh, was both an inspiration and a, a mentor to, to many. Um, and so we thought it fitting, those members of the board, uh, to uh, rename uh, our coalition internship program based on the legacy and life um, that John uh, exemplified. And because his achievements and personal example have inspired countless young people to seek both the highest standards of integrity and service in their careers, and of course in grateful memory for his longtime support of this program. Henceforth, this program will be named the John N. Lauer Leadership Program. And I know that those of us who had the privilege of working with him and calling him a special friend or a family member in the case of several here uh, will be gratified to know that young folks will be following in his footsteps and will need to be accepted to this program um, in order to um, honor and follow his example. Um, I'd also like to just briefly say um, what a pleasure it is to have uh, John Lipsky here tonight. Um, John is also a special friend to many of us here and also a special friend of the coalition. And uh, his dear wife, uh, Zhuja, passed recently and we're just uh, uh, very pleased and honored that John chose to uh, share this evening with us. Thank you, John. And uh, with that, I will not keep anyone from their supper. Well, what a wonderful evening. This is um, always one of my favorite nights of the year standing on the shores of the Potomac River in downtown D.C., uh, where policies are made right down the street that affect the nation and the world, sitting with friends, family, and leaders from across our wonderful community. And we have the opportunity to honor people who have made outstanding contributions to the Hungarian-American community we are all a part of and we all serve. Now, most of the people gathered in the room are longtime friends of the coalition, and you all already know what we're all about, and thank you for your continued support. But for those of you who are new, I did want to provide a brief synopsis. The Hungarian American Coalition was founded some 27 years ago in 1991 when sweeping changes came to the region of Central and Eastern Europe. The coalition is made up of 25 organizations and many individual members, including some of the most active members of the community. Our activities are primarily focused in the areas of leadership training and scholarship, preservation and promotion of Hungarian culture, information advocacy on both sides of the Atlantic, community outreach, and monitoring human rights of Hungarians who live outside the borders of Hungary. Through the years, we've raised more than $6 million to conduct nearly 480 projects, including 160 scholar and internships, and 37 con conferences, an untold number of state visits, uh, not, I'm sorry, not state visits officially, but visits to the states, <laughs> amend that. Um, so really impressive work. Um, 
long before I was involved or at the helm of this great organization. So I'm, I'm very proud of our, of our record and of our history and of everything that people in this room have accomplished. So I would just like to applause. You don't have to, but I'm going to. So thank you all. <laughs> this evening's gala brings together um, several of those activities that we focus on. Um, every year, the gala helps raise awareness and funds for the Dr. Elemer and Eva Kish Scholarship Program which was founded in 1999. This is a partial scholarship given to talented Hungarian college students who have already been accepted at an American university and need a little bit extra to kind of fill the gap. It's um, really been a godsend for some incredible talented students and made a big difference in their, uh, in their education. Earlier you heard Max speak about our flagship leadership training program, the Coalition Internship Program, now the John N. Lauer Excellence in Leadership Program. Um, since early 2005, we've hosted some 75 interns through CIP with various sponsors, including the Charles Shimoni Fund for Arts and Sciences, the Hungary Initiatives Foundation, and most recently, the Pannonias Foundation. Currently, we have two interns in the DC area, and I wanted to just provide a very brief introduction to them to give you some idea of the program. Uh, Victoria Katona from Keste, Hungary, uh, is interested in international law and energy policy, and she will be spending the next four months at the Center for European Policy Analysis. Orsoya Andrea Lurins is from Seke Udvarhe, Romania. Her areas of focus are international marketing, entrepreneurship, and minority policy. And she is interning at the Global Entrepreneurship Network. All of these internship and leadership training programs, along with the Bela Bognar Family Hungarian Scholarship, are incredibly important through their experiences, young Hungarians from Hungary and across the region spend valuable time in the US. They learn about civil service, they build professional networks, and they gain experiences that they can immediately draw on once they return home. And this, as everyone in this room has seen firsthand, has an amazing ripple effect. Another area of focus for the coalition is monitoring the human rights of ethnic Hungarians who live outside the borders of Hungary. And frankly, we had been hoping we would be out of this business long ago, um, but currently there is a crisis in the Ukraine. Um, Laszlo will be telling us a little bit more about that, but just so you know, um, several months ago I visited His Excellency Laszlo Brenzovich at his office in Bedexaz, Ukraine, and uh, just recently this very building was bombed by uh, ultra-nationalists, the third bombing in the last several months. So it really has escalated and made the situation for Hungarians in that area even more difficult than it already was. We invited um, uh, Mr. Bre uh, Dr. Brenzovich, Dr. Oros, and Jörg Kota to visit Washington so that they could tell their own story to decision makers and policy analysts so that we can help raise awareness uh, to what is happening in their region. And these are just a few areas of the coalition's focus, but they match perfectly with our two honorees two dynamos, Dr. Jenny Brown and Dr. Ildiko Oros. Uh, I'd like to call your attention to a short video about Dr. Jenny Brown. Dr. Jeanette Getchi Griselli Brown is a Hungarian-American success story. She's a first-generation Hungarian raised to be a proud American. She is a lifelong Clevelander with deep ties to the city that welcomed Hungarians and ethnic immigrants of all kinds at the turn of the century. Jenny's parents first met as core makers at the National Malleable Steel Casting Company. She grew up with her younger brother Robert during the Depression in the Hungarian epicenter of Cleveland, Buckeye Road. The family spoke Hungarian at home and were surrounded by Hungarian community. But once she started attending school, her mother insisted they speak English, saying, you are first and foremost American now. She excelled as a student, but found her niche in chemistry in high school, intrigued by the idea she could one day invent something to help people. She went on to Ohio University and continued to thrive. But during that time, her brother was diagnosed with Hodgkin's disease and passed away two years later. Her father never truly recovered from the grief, and eventually her parents divorced. Both events had a significant impact on Jenny, but she stayed focused on her studies, and her drive to succeed grew stronger still. Rather 
right out of school, she landed a job at Standard Oil, doing industrial research, and remained there for her entire 38-year career. So Ohio had a renowned research lab, and what she started was just beginning research on industrial applications from the newest technologies used in the war, infrared spectrometry. This was the basis for her illustrious career. She filed one patent and authored 90 publications and nine books in the field of infrared and Raman spectroscopy. In 1978, she made her first trip back to Hungary to address the Hungarian Academy of Sciences. By then, she no longer spoke the language, but was helped by a friend to say a few opening lines in her mother tongue. In 1982, she was asked to serve on her first board, Nicolette Instrument Company. From that point on, she served as the first woman on many corporate boards, which led to high visibility and more promotions. In the 80s, when she became director of research, she worked to level salaries for men and women and establish part-time work and childcare facilities, policies well ahead of her time. When she retired in 1989, she was the director of corporate research. During retirement, Jenny focused on education, arts, and the local Hungarian-American community. With her beloved husband, Glenn, a chemical engineer at Ohio, they traveled the world, seeing more than 120 countries. Glenn had two children, Robin and Eric, and Glenn and Jenny are the proud grandparents to three grandchildren. In 1995, she was appointed to the Ohio Board of Regents, the coordinating body for all higher education in the state of Ohio and reappointed in 1999. Among her many professional accolades, she received the Garvin Medal from the American Chemical Society as the outstanding woman chemist in the United States. She was the first woman inducted into the Ohio Science and Technology Hall of Fame. Jenny holds 13 honorary degrees, including the most recent from the University of Page in Hungary. Her civic involvements include the boards of the Cleveland Hungarian Development Panel, the Cleveland Orchestra, the Great Lakes Science Center, the Cleveland Clinic Foundation, and many more. In 2002, she received the National Ellis Island Medal of Honor for her work with the Cleveland Hungarian community. In 2011, she was presented with the Order of Merit of the Republic of Hungary. Jenny is a true Hungarian at heart, a great lover of classical music, and admirer of famous Hungarian scientists and inventors from years past. Congratulations, Jenny, and thank you for your many contributions and support of our community. Uh, so I have had the privilege of knowing Jenny for more than half of my life. Um, the one thing missing from the video is, uh, is about the love story of Glenn and Jenny. Uh, Mom and I were just talking about this. Every time Mom or I would go to visit, uh, Glenn would walk us down to the room filled with Jenny's certificates from floor to ceiling and all of her honorary degrees and make sure we had seen the latest, uh, the latest award or accolade. Um, he, he has always been so proud and, as I said earlier, uh, her greatest fan. Um, when I was walking around the tables earlier, I also heard a story from Carolyn that I, um, I remember Jenny telling me a little while ago, and I think this is also wonderful. Jenny told me that um, uh, Carolyn had an assignment at school to draw um, what she thought of when she heard the word scientist. And so, of course, her, um, her grandmother is a complete rock star, and so she drew Jenny in a green jumper because they would vacation together in Florida and she would wear a green jumper. And, uh, and apparently the kids made fun of Carolyn at the school. Well, scientists don't wear jumpers. I mean, I don't know what you're thinking, and green earrings and stuff. So Jenny thought, well, I'm going to you know, make sure that, uh, that that never happens again. And so sure enough, she found a way, even in New Hampshire, in, in winter, to wear her, her jumper. She put a turtleneck under it, and she wore the green earrings, and she showed up in class to speak to the class and make sure that they knew that women scientists did indeed wear green jumpers and green earrings, and Carolyn was not wrong. So... <laughs> Yeah. As you heard in the video, Jenny is a woman with remarkable accomplishments, uh, breaking through glass ceilings practically before we knew they were even there. Her professional accomplishments are truly, truly impressive, but she has also made extraordinary contributions to countless programs in civil society. Tonight, we honor her for specifically, 
we, I'm sorry, we honor her specifically for her longstanding and enthusiastic support for educational and cultural programs that strengthen the greater Hungarian American community. Jenny, you are truly a Hungarian American star. I'd like to call you to the podium, please, to accept this honor. Um, I'd also like to, talk, like to ask Dr. Agnes Virga, the chairman of the coalition, uh, Governor George Pataki and Edith Kishlauer, our uh, gala co-chairs, to come up as we present the award. And I'm going to present the award to Jenny. It reads, in recognition of Dr. Jeanette Getchy Griselli brown whose decades of outstanding leadership in science, business, and community service and genuine pride in her Hungarian heritage have strengthened Hungarian-American institutions, earning the admiration and gratitude of the Hungarian-American community. Okay, can we all turn and have a picture, and then we'll get up. Thank you all. Let me help you put that back on the table. We'll, we'll, we'll wipe off the, we'll, we'll wipe off the thumbprints. <laughs> Well, thank you, Andrea, very, very much, right from my heart, for that very warm introduction and those kind words. I am truly deeply honored by this recognition from the Hungarian American Coalition, an organization I have admired since its founding by my dear friend, Edith Lauer, whose recent loss of her beloved husband, John, has saddened us all. They were a couple made for the ages. We are all blessed to have known each of them. As Andrea and I were discussing this evening's program, she asked me how being Hungarian had made a difference in my life. It's a good question. As I pondered the question, I realized that being Hungarian was the very core of my being. It shaped all my morals, my values, and it drove my ambitions and my dreams. I love telling friends that I'm Hungarian. I'm proud of a heritage that so closely mirrors many American ideals. Famous and gifted Americans and Hungarians in the arts, sciences, and public service have contributed in both countries, enriching culture and society. <clears throat> and there are many parallels in our histories, in our fights for freedom and recognition of human rights. Hungary is a remarkable country. I think you all know that. For decades over the centuries, it has been occupied and oppressed. Yet it has retained its language and culture intact. Maybe because Hungarians are stubborn. <laughs> but, but the people of this small country are also amazingly creative. From the fun and frustration of the Rubik Cube to the small ballpoint pen, mightier than the sword, to the power of the hydrogen bomb and Microsoft Word. Hungar Hungary, I wonder if many of you know, has more Nobel laureates per capita than any other country in the world. The Hungarian legacy of music, literature, and science is what the HAC works for to preserve and celebrate. As you heard, my parents were Hungarian immigrants. Neither of them had more than an eighth grade education. But my love of science and curiosity about the world around me and my love of music were developed in my Hungarian upbringing. My dad taught us to work hard, 
help others, and always do our best. He pointed out that to be Hungarian is not enough, but it may help. <clears throat> My mom loved music. She was an excellent cook. She and I would listen to the radio, no TVs in those days. We were doing chores around the house or preparing meals in the kitchen. I still know almost all the words to songs of the 30s and 40s, to the great astonishment of all my friends, and I could instantly recognize a sonata by Liszt or a Bartok symphony. My mom taught us to dream and to love music, dance, and literature. She instilled that Hungarian spirit in us. My brother and I were raised during the Depression, and we were poor. But our home was filled with love and lots of friends. They all helped each other as much as they could, even sharing precious food obtained with food stamps in those times. Evening card games around the kitchen table were frequent, as were Sunday picnics in the Metro Parks, where we would have solano bread, one of my favorites, and the children would wade in the waters of the Chagrin River. We had so many lovely customs, the special meals and activities at Christmas, Easter, and name days. My husband still remarks that he never knew there were so many customs in any country. <laughs> Even the magnets on my refrigerator door remind him every day that he married a Hungarian to quote, you bet your goulash, I'm Hungarian. <laughs> and my favorite, kiss me, I'm Hungarian. It always works because he does. <laughs> my parents knew that an education was the route to opportunity in this great country of ours. They taught us to be true to our values and to always treasure our Hungarian heritage. Those values shape my life and are why I admire and respect the work of the HAC so very much. Providing internships and scholarships to young people is truly important, especially when programs are across borders and cultures. This experience helps us to appreciate diversity of all kinds in nature, in people, in cultures, and in religion. Education provides us with those tools to have a rewarding career and to enrich our lives through the arts and culture with a deep appreciation of the beauty and the wonder of the world around us. Freedom is fragile if citizens are ignorant, but with freedom goes the responsibility to give back to our communities in whatever ways we can. That is the principle of volunteerism and philanthropy, which is so core to the American way of life and is almost unique in the world. I was molded by the great American melting pot, and I did pursue the American dream. I had a fine education, was inspired to pursue a career in science, had mentors, all men in those days, worked for a wonderful company, and have had an absolutely fabulous and rewarding career and a personally happy life. Throughout these years, volunteering and giving my time and resources to worthy projects was always a high priority. I believe passionately that there's no greater gift in life than to give to others. Winston Churchill once said, we make a living by what we get. We make a life by what we give. I am truly grateful for this honor tonight from the Hungarian American Coalition. It humbles me to be in the ranks of so many distinguished individuals who came here before me and are here this evening. I thank you all and most especially want to acknowledge the love of my life, my biggest supporter, Dr. Glenn R. Brown, and all of my family, our children, Eric and Robin, our grandchildren, Carolyn and Charles, my son-in-law, John, and friends, Guy and Kathy. Thank you all. Kusunem Sapen. Well, 
I'm inspired. Can I ask you to cue up the next video, and then as we watch a little bit about the uh, Transcarpathian Hungarian Institute, I'll ask Dr. Agnes Svirga to come up to introduce our next honoree. Thank you. I, I think it was really a very remarkable video showing a wonderful organization with all these young people and uh, it was very nice to see, I was so touched. Um, Dr. Ildiko Oros, uh, our honorary uh, tonight, has been working passionately to train Hungarian native language educators for more than 30 years in Karpato, Ukraine. In 1993, a foundation was set up to establish post-secondary education for the Hungarian national minority in the Transcarpathian region of the Ukraine, numbering at approximately 150,000 people, which is about the 12.1% of the region's total population. Since 2001, Ildiko has been president of that foundation, now the Ferenc Rákóczi II Transcarpathian Hungarian Institute. Since then, the institute has expanded its mandate from teacher training 
to include master's program, short-term intensive and vocational courses. By the ongoing conflict and economic deprivation in Ukraine threatened the viability of this ancient ethnic Hungarian community, the Transcarpathian Hungarian Institute with 1,200 students enrolled is a remaining beacon of hope for its future. Due to overwhelming success of this program, Dr. Oros is well respected across the region as a founder, organizer of the Educational Institute, a community activist and public figure. She has won many awards, among them Janos Arany Medal of the Hungarian Academy of Sciences in 2005, Order of the Merit of the Hungarian Republic Officer Cross 2010, Golden Wheat Grain Award of the Hungarian Women's League 2013. Unfortunately, as uh, Andrea already presented this, Dr. Oros cannot be with us this evening because she is meeting with accreditation officials from the Ukrainian government. In her place, His Excellency Dr. Laszlo Brenzovich, member of the Ukrainian parliament and president of the Cultural Union of Hungarians in Transcarpathia, will accept the award. Uh, and I would like to ask uh, His Excellency, and please, uh, the uh, coalition and, the, and uh, this uh, gala chair uh, uh, persons, uh, please come up to the podium and present the award. Let me, let me read the laudate, please. Doctor, in recognition of Dr. Ildiko Oros, Rector, Ferenc Rákóczi II Transcarpathian Hungarian Institute, for her long-lasting dedication to teaching and inspiring future generations of leaders for the Hungarian minority of Transcarpathia. The Hungarian-American community salutes Dr. Oros and the Transcarpathian Hungarian Institute for their invaluable contributions to the past, present, and future of Hungarians in Ukraine. Uh, from the Hungarian-American Coalition, Washington, D.C., April 25th, 2018. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I will speak Hungarian due to a number of reasons. The first is that I don't speak English. I think uh, it is very well characterizing the fate of the Hungarian uh, minority in Transcarpathia uh, that the uh, person who uh, has been granted, uh, she cannot be here today. 
And I would also like to introduce uh, Dirk Kota, who is an <laughs> employee of the Hungarian Prime Minister's Office, and he's also from Berexas, and Transcarpathia, and I will translate Mr. Brindlow's. <laughs> <laughs> our, our problems have started in uh, 1918, exactly 100 years ago. <laughs> and I think it could be illustrated by, an, by a joke. An old man from Mugaj, from Mukachevo, has been asked, where I'm born. I was born in the Austrian Hungarian monarchy. Uh, where did you start at school? Czechoslovakia. In Czechoslovakia. Uh, when you uh, where where did you receive where, where did you receive your high school grade? In the Hungarian Kingdom. Where did you start working? In the Soviet Union. And where are you living now? In Ukraine. Oh, you've lived in a number of countries during your life. Me, I never went anywhere from Ukraine. <laughs> So we Hungarians in Sakarpathia uh, has been citizens of five different countries during the last 100 years. Uh, it was not easy to survive. The history of the family of uh, Dr. Ildiko Oros uh, is a very good example of uh, how Hungarians in uh, Transcarpathia survived in the period. The, uh, grandparents of Ildiko Oros has been taken to uh, the special camp by the Soviet, by the Soviets in 1945. When they returned, all their values and assets has been taken away. And uh, her mother uh, studied in among very difficult conditions in the teacher training school. Uh, then she married the teacher. She gave birth to three children. Uh, Ildiko's father died very early. Her mother remained along with three children. And when Ildiko graduated from the high school, she started to work immediately. Uh, in order to help her younger sisters to obtain education. She worked as a director of school. And when the Soviet Union fell apart and uh, some opportunities has opened, uh, she started to organize the Transcarpathian and Hungarian education immediately. And as a result of that activity, a number of new schools were opened. Uh, she assisted in the Roman uh, to Roman Catholic. Uh, Reform Church and also the Greek Catholic Church to establish uh, high schools, their own high schools. Uh, 
But of course, the crown of her activities is the establishment of the Hungarian uh, Institute of Software Papacy. There was no higher education in Hungarian language in software papacy earlier. And basically, Ildiko Oros, uh, Dr. Kama Sós, and myself, we started the establishment of this system from zero. Um, we received a, a lot of help from the mayor of Bereksas, his name was Istvan Pataki. <laughs> It was very interesting when the uh, institute was registered and we're uh, the first delegation from Kiev uh, came to examine if uh, the necessary conditions are available or not. Uh, we needed to be very tricky because at that time we had no building and we had no teachers. But we succeeded. And it's time being, uh, and we received a lot of different grants from. Uh, Hungarian foundations and private persons, and we established a very nice institution where we have more than 1,000 students now. And most of uh, our staff, our teacher staff, are the graduates of our educational institution. And of course, they obtained a scientific degree. Of course, it couldn't be done without the uh, active assistance and help uh, from the uh, Hungarian government and uh, different Hungarian universities like Debrecen University and uh, Nyíregyháza University. And now I would uh, like to express my gratitude and I'm very touched. And the help and the uh, assistance uh, provided by the uh, Hungarian American Coalition. Because uh, Ms. Edith Lauer uh, helped us a number of times earlier. <laughs> and this is also important that uh, Andrea Lauer and uh, Mr. Short uh, Sekeres uh, take uh, the opportunity and uh, came to Transcarpathia in this very uh, um, unstable situation. <laughs> they had an opportunity to see the headquarters of the Hungarian uh, Cultural Alliance of Sapkapetia before it was blown up. And I also think that I have an opportunity uh, to receive this. Uh, a uh, prize in the name of Ildiko, she will be very happy to have it. And uh, I also highly appreciate that they helped in organizing a number of meetings with the uh, personnel of the State Department and uh, Congress of the United States of America. Well, we had an opportunity uh, to provide direct information about our problems, the problems we are fighting with. 
Of course, there is a certain will uh, according to which uh, they would like to terminate Hungarian education in Subcarpathia. And we cannot afford it. Because if we like uh, the community uh, to remain uh, alive, then it is very important uh, to have the uh, education preserved. Hmm. <laughs> Therefore, Ms. Hildkoros fights at home with the delegation from Kiev, like uh, Ilona, Ilona Zrini in her times in the castle of Mungac. Therefore, I am trying to find a fight here with the help of the uh, Hungarian-American coalition. We will never give up. And as uh, Mr. Zsigmond Ramenik wrote, we won't give up the church and the school. Thank you very much for your attention, and I'm very grateful to you. Well, it's great to be inspi so inspired by both of our honorees and our guests this evening. Thank you so much for both of you. Uh, I'd like to um, invite uh, Ambassador Janos Chak to the podium to offer a toast. He has one of the best mustaches in the room. <laughs> Thank you, Ando. The best mustache is owned by my friend John Lipsky. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, friends. Uh, we just heard two speeches. Jenny Gaethje Brown and Laszlo Branzovic, a good friend of mine. And uh, I just figured that how close we are, all of us in this room, and Hungarians and Americans. Ingenuity which is true for living as a Hungarian and being a scientist. Perseverance, being a Hungarian in Subcarpathia or anywhere else, and being as a scientist. And faithfulness to the values that are dear to our hearts. And this is what bonds us together, what connects us. Hungarians, Americans, scientists, directors of universities, politicians, bakers, and so on. So I would like to raise my glass, cheering the performance of Jenny and Ildiko, represented by Laszlo, and for the friendship and the common things and common causes of Hungarians and Americans. God bless Hungary. God bless America. Good evening, everyone. I'm Susan Hutchison, and um, many of you know me over the years because I represented Charles Simoni a proud Hungarian and a proud American. Uh, I have a 1948 World Book Encyclopedia. Some of you have heard this story, but I um, once, as we have done growing up, we pick up one of the volumes, and the one I happened to pick up, I was well past childhood, but I just started reading the M's, and I came upon Magyar. And this 1948 encyclopedia said, the Magyars are independent, haughty, and proud, and they love to wear bright colors. <laughs> and so I presented this to Charles one day. I said, Charles, what do you think of this? The 1948 World Book Encyclopedia says 
Magyars are independent, haughty, and proud, and they love to wear bright colors. And Charles kind of cocked his head and looked at me and said, well, I am haughty. <laughs> well, I know Jenny. Jenny, you are not haughty, but you look great in those bright colors today. <laughs> and you got to love a scientist who puts a flower in her hair. <laughs> Jenny and I have traveled. We've, uh, we've been to Page together. We've been to Athens, Ohio together. We've been to the symphony together where the uh, Cleveland Orchestra played in Seattle. And I have treasured uh, my times with Jenny and Glenn. Um, and I think about Ildico and Laszlo's uh, wonderful account of uh, what Ildico stands for. And I think of all of you in this room that um, Jenny chose to live a life of consequence. And her long, incredible career speaks volumes, but her post-career also does. And Ildiko as well, she has chosen in a very tough situation to live a life of consequence. And so my toast tonight is to all of you who have shown me, a friend of Hungary, uh, what it is to live a life of consequence. I never forget it when I am with you. To all of you. Good evening. As someone who has chosen to live a life of largely inconsequence, <laughs> it's a pleasure to be with you tonight. I'm going to speak to you in English for a number of reasons. The first one being I don't speak Hungarian. But let me just try. Erlek Idvajek Unel Maestik. I don't know if anybody could understand that. But the only other thing I can say in Hungarian is I've had too much wine to drink, so I will try, try to be short. Um, the Hungarian American Coalition is a tremendous organization. And I'm just going to briefly thank some of the people who are so involved, because it's an organization, but ultimately it comes down to a handful of people who work night and day, and have worked night and day to make it succeed. And first, Max Teleki. We all know Max has been such a tremendous force for the Hungarian-American Coalition and Hungarians in America. Max, I would be remiss not to thank you every time I see you. We're all proud to be your friends. And Jolt Sekeresh and his long-suffering wife, you know, Jolt, <laughs> you are a force of nature for Hungarian-Americans for all and for all of us when we seek to go to Hungary, so thank you. And just one other, you can applaud, Jolt. And just one others, and those are, as you all know, the Lauer family. Edith and John, Edith, to you, you have been such a positive force, and you and John gave us Andrea. And we may have lost John, but we have Andrea and I'm waiting for her kids to learn Hungarian because the continuation of groups like Hack is because of people like you and John and what you have done for people like Andrea. So thank you for all that you have done and what you have meant for this organization. And let me just join everyone in congratulating Jenny Brown. I haven't traveled with you to Page or, or in Ohio, but I heard you speak tonight. And Susan Hutchison talked about your career of consequence. And yes, it has been that. And you should be very proud of what you've accomplished. But I heard you speak tonight. And I think it's the first time I heard you speak. You're only 90. You are incredibly articulate. You are brilliant with an unbelievable vision for the future. There's still time. We need someone like you to run for president. So, <laughs> so to all of you, and to Jeannie Brown, Congratulations. Our final toast of the evening is from a young man, Ted Horvat. 
coming from the back of the room. Well, Jenny, you and I are the two 90-year-olds in the room. <laughs> I first met Jenny in the fourth grade. We went through, all the way through high school, and then she went her way and I went my way, and we met again about 15 or 20 years ago, uh, struggling with trying to help organizations uh, further themselves. And Jenny, you are the queen of Hungarian Americans. And you instill energy in people not by force, but by example. And you've instilled energy in me as one illustration by your example. You have helped organizations like the Cleveland Orchestra, which are very valuable to the community, but offer services to more so to people who can appreciate it than the poor. Unfortunately, it's a shame that the poor don't get enough classical education. But Jenny has also nurtured organizations designed to help those in need. And this is, in my opinion, her greatest accomplishment. Jenny, I raise my glass to you and wish you another 20 years at least. This is a hard act to follow, these guys. Ladies and gentlemen, Jenny may have instilled energy in Ted, but y'all have wiped me out tonight, so I think we might need to, <laughs> to call it an evening. Um, ladies and gentlemen, this concludes this evening's program. Uh, I would like to thank you all for your support of the Hungarian American Coalition and our scholarship program, the Dr. Elemer and Eva Kish Scholarship Fund. We would like to thank the following individuals and organizations for their generosity and support. Our gala co-chairs, Governor George Pataki, who gives a rousing speech and really needs to run for public office again. <laughs> Mrs. Edith K. Lauer, again, I don't know if she's gonna claim that she's my mother or not, but she is. The Magyar Foundation, thank you for your support. You guys had a fun table over there tonight. <laughs> And thank you again to our fantastic honorees uh, who really have inspired all of us to, um, uh, with their, with their uh, consequential, li their lives of consequence. I love how Susan put that. Dr. Jenny Brown, a true inspiration to pioneers everywhere and her lovely fa family for coming to help us celebrate. Thank you guys. And on behalf of the Fedan Sadakosi, the second Transcarpathian Institute, His Excellency Laszlo Brenzovich, we look forward to reports of many improved conditions in the, in the Ukraine and great things coming out of your meetings in DC this week. And I look forward to visiting you once again in your reopened, safe, peaceful office in the near future. As always, I would like to add our heartfelt thanks to Jolt Sekeresh, Max Teleki, and Noemi Banhidi for their hard work in making this evening a success. Let's give a little round of applause there. And special thanks and a heartfelt welcome to Flora Banhidi for her help from the Budapest office. It was another memorable dinner and a wonderful chance to catch up with old friends and colleagues and make new ones. Thank you to our current coalition interns, Victoria and Orshi, and all of our former interns who came from, from far and wide to join in the festivities. And lastly, thank you to Jolt Molnar for filming this evening's event as he does for so many events in our community. We hope you enjoyed the evening. Minankinek köszönjük a részvételet, és szép jó Thank you once again, and good evening. <laughs>